Thermodynamics, the second law. Questions to ponder. What is the second law of thermodynamics? What is a heat engine? What is efficiency? What is the efficiency of a heat engine? What is a Carnot engine and cycle? What is the efficiency of a Carnot engine? And what is entropy? The second law of ther thermodynamics. Uh, part one, heat flows from a high temperature to a low temperature. And part two, no system can turn input heat at a high temperature into 100% output work. Some of the input heat after doing the work um, is expelled into the environment as output heat at a lower temperature. So here is a typical um, generator system. Uh, in this case, we take water in here and into what's known as a boiler. And the water's in this pipe here uh, that is, is uh, back and forth in this boiler. And a lot of heat goes into this uh, coil system and actually creates steam. So this water that's in this coil system turns into high, temp high temperature, high pressure steam that spins and turns a turbine. That spinning, turning turbine from the steam does work. A lot of times this work uh, uh, is the spinning of an electrical generator out here. Now, that steam does work. As it gets to the other end of the turbine and comes out, it still is steam, but it's at a lot lower temperature. And uh, when it comes into this device called a um, condenser right here, that uh, condenser is a cooling system that removes the heat from the, uh, the leftover heat from that steam out into the environment. So the high temperature, high heat going in now um, has to, uh, we have to remove some of that heat even after doing work so we can condense the um, steam back into water. Some of that work from here can actually be used to then um, turn a pump which is gonna take the condensed water and pump it back through the system here as it boils and repeats itself. So this is a cyclical process here. Again, a process that is not even close to 100% efficient. Typical coal generator, electrical generating power plants where you take coal into uh, using a boiler here to boil the water, to turn the turbine, to turn the electrical generators. That's the most common type of power plant. And in those power plants, power plants, uh, we only are at about 33% efficiency, so about 67% uh, of uh, this energy from the coal is uh, kind of wasted out into the environment out here. This type of a system that we were uh, just looking at here is the uh, most common way of generating electricity. Um, in the boiler region here, we uh, use different uh, sources there, such as coal or oil or nuclear reactions to create the heating here. But then uh, we turn that uh, hot steam, the pressure from that hot steam going through the turbine, spinning a electric generator, and that's how we produce most uh, of the electricity that we use. Um, this schematic system over here is an example of a simplified example of this practical system here. And this system is representing what we call a heat engine. A heat engine is where you have uh, a hot source at a high temperature here that's going to heat the system, similar to our boiler. And then that heat that uh, is brought into the system can do work. And uh, some of that work can be recycled back into the system uh, here. Uh, but then, it's a, uh, in, in any practical system here, in any real system, uh, we also have to expel heat into the environment uh, to a lower temperature. And that's often called a cold sink. So we have a hot source generating work, but then also then we have to cool uh, our system with a cold sink. And this uh, simplified system, again, is called a heat engine. So let's use our heat engine here and analyze a cyclical process uh, that continues to make 
uh, or do work for us and create that electricity, for example. So if we have a hot source here, our boiler, uh, producing uh, uh, energy in our system here, we get some work out and we also um, expel some energy to the environment here and uh, then the process repeats itself. So in this uh, particular process here, it continues to uh, cycle the water and create steam and create the uh, work and just keeps going and going provided, uh, provided that we continue to add heat to uh, our system here. Um, so let's take a look at uh, this heat engine and the cyclical process using our first law of thermodynamics. Because it's a uh, cyclical process, the uh, internal energy in our system here uh, can't increase or decrease if we're going to sustain it uh, and keep producing work. So the internal energy in our system has to always uh, average to zero upon this continuous cycle here. So if the internal energy overall uh, is zero through the whole cycle and process, then the amount of heat, uh, heating of the system, plus the amount of work done uh, should equal zero. Uh, in other words, the heat is what delivers the work. Now the heat here is really the difference between the um, high temperature heating and the low temperature sinking uh, of the heat here. So uh, the total work done in our heat engine in this cyclical process, the total work done is a difference between the heat in and the heat out of our system. And uh, unfortunately, these systems uh, like burning coal to create electricity and so forth are quite inefficient. We usually only get about 33% out compared to what we put in here as far as burning the coal. So for uh, of the 100% of coal uh, heating we create, we only get about 33% equivalent in electrical energy out. And so we're losing almost two thirds of our uh, energy just to heating up the environment. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at efficiency here and uh, how we can uh, analyze efficiency in our heat engines. Efficiency. There are two ways we generally look at efficiency here. Um, uh, one way would be to see how much power we get out uh, compared to the amount of power we put into a system. And uh, the other way would be how much work we can get out uh, compared to how much work we put into a system. So those are the two general ways we look at efficiency. In the second law of thermodynamics, basically says that uh, this efficiency cannot um, be 100%. In other words, we can't get everything out that we put in. Uh, back to our heat engine then, uh, looking at efficiency. Uh, our input is the amount of uh, heat we put in here, and our output is the amount of work done. So efficiency in our heat engine would be the uh, work output compared to the heat input. Um, and of course our work output, remember, was equal to the high heat minus the low heat, the heat coming in versus minus the heat going out of our system. So our overall uh, heat engine equation here is the difference in the high heat and low heat divided by the high heat. And as you can tell here, unless we don't have any heat coming out here, the efficiency has to be less than 100%. And uh, unfortunately, usually this is a pretty big number. Um, like I said, two thirds in most uh, electrical systems. Although now there's uh, some systems that are as efficient as 60%, so 40% losses, and we'll get 60% of the work out in some of the more uh, modern systems. So now we're going to look at a, uh, an ideal heat engine uh, that was created by a French scientist uh, whose name is Carnot. And uh, this ideal heat engine here is called a Carnot engine. Uh, in a Carnot engine, you can see that uh, schematically it's the same as what we've been talking about. The difference, though, is in, in the cyclical process here. 
uh, starting at point A in the cyclical process in a Carnot engine, uh, we go from point A to point B when heat is being added to the system here along an isotherm. And then uh, that's followed by an adiabatic expansion uh, in the system where the volume increases as the pressure decreases, but uh, no heat is added during this part. The volume expansion is at the cost of the um, pressure decrease. And then uh, from point C to point D is where we're expelling heat into our cold sink here, and, it fo and we follow ideally an adiabatic, I mean an isothermic um, compression there where the volume is decreasing, uh, pressure increasing slightly, uh, but the volume is decreasing mainly because of this cooling here. And then we um, end the cycle with an adiabatic compression where we compress and we create a higher pressure and we increase the temperature uh, without adding heat to the system. So Carnot proved that uh, this particular uh, process right here from A to B to C to D uh, following an isothermic, then an adiabatic, then an isothermic, and another adiabatic um, process um, here where the uh, internal energy change is zero, but the work done is this purple area into the curve, that that is the most efficient possible heat engine. So Carnot efficiency, even with the best heat engine possible, and our best systems possible now are called heat recovery steam generators uh, for generating electricity, and they're a little bit more complex than our other system we looked at, but they um, get to efficiencies close to 60%, and uh, so that's a lot better than 33%. Um, uh, anyway, the best possible efficiency we could hope for, based on the second law of thermodynamics and this Carnot cycle here, is if we is based on the temperature differential. So depending on how high the temperature is coming in versus how low the temperature is going out here, the greater we can make these extremes um, relative to the temperature coming in, the more efficient we can be. So again, we'd like uh, the low temperature to be close to uh, uh, zero and the high temperature to be really high, um, but uh, there are practical limitations with materials and so forth that uh, keep us from uh, getting to efficiencies that uh, are even close to 100%. So that is your car no efficiency. So since no system can even approach 100% efficiency, we come to an idea called entropy. Because our heat going into our system uh, can be used partially for work, but, the, but uh, a good part of it goes into the random heating of our universe, um, uh, we have this idea of entropy, meaning that uh, the second law of thermodynamics really says that order turns to disorder naturally. So there, are, here are some examples of increasing entropy. You clean your room, and it'll get messy again soon. You build a sandcastle, it will be washed away or blown away. Crystals of salt will mix with water and dissolve into a random mixture. Hot water will cool to room temperature. A building will fall apart. A mountain will erode away. A drop ball hits the ground and eventually comes to rest. A moving car slows to a stop. A log will burn. A glass will break. So, order and uh, usefulness takes energy. Overcoming entropy is a constant battle. We will fight our whole lives until entropy will even get the best of us. To create useful work requires energy. Unfortunately, disorder happens naturally. So, here are uh, your questions to answer now. What is the second law of thermodynamics? What is a heat engine? What is efficiency? What is the efficiency of a heat engine? What is a Carnot engine and cycle? What is, this, what is the efficiency of a Carnot engine? And what is entropy? Scratch's parting idea here. And I wish you uh, efficiency on your quest for continuous improvement.